Um, before we get going, are there any Moms for Liberty in the house? <laughs> moms for Liberty? No? Good. <laughs> then hands will not need to be thrown tonight. I had another idea uh, for a video today, and I was going to um, show you some books from an upcoming auction. Um, but I, I decided after waking up to an unfortunate news article this morning um, that I would film a different kind of video because I think that we should be clear about this and uh there's no reason for me to not be direct i like to think of myself as a friendly open accepting person someone who tries very hard to live in a way where i view others with unconditional love and it's difficult because we we all get aggravated with one another humans and <laughs> Um, love can be a very difficult thing to find sometimes. And, uh, you know, there, there have been many a great thinker and scholar and spiritual guru, uh, that, uh, across time has written a, about the value of love and grace and understanding. But the thing that we need to be really clear about is that, this channel is explicitly pro book. This is a channel that I created in order to exorcise my own love and fondness for what books have given me in my life, because they have given me a great deal. They have not only filled my time and made me feel less lonely at times, but they give you perspective and value and ideas that you may not have come across in your own social surroundings. So for me, it's very important that everyone understand that this is a fiercely pro book channel. I avoid negativity uh, to some extent. I think that there's a time and a place for negativity and um, that like any other em emotional thing, it, 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 it deserves its own space. But I decided when I made this channel and when I made the woodworking channel that maybe this isn't a space for negativity. There's plenty of negativity online and I don't want to contribute to more of that. But I got to get some stuff off of my chest today because I am very, very upset. I mean, the name is the book rapport, not the book. Go fuck yourself. But, but I'm, I, 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 I think that this is a discussion that we need to have and it's becoming imminently important that we all address this and we all see this for what it is and call it what it is with a very specific name. So for the last couple of years and uh, many years before that, uh, we have watched uh, in the United States specifically, uh, American fundamentalist Christian conservatives trying to insert themselves into the realm of books. Now, there is a very famous example of a group of people who use many of the same tactics that the um, current uh, conservatives in America are using in order to uh, remove books, physically remove books from access to people. My town uh, happens to be a red town in a blue state. And uh, it's also the home of one of the largest hate groups in America, uh, focused on the family. 
So there has always been a very uh, deeply conservative or libertarian undercurrent to the town that I live in. And there are many people who will attribute that to uh, the presence of the military or, you know, what, whatever it is. Uh, but I can tell you that the, the cause of conservative attitudes in a place has less to do with the presence of military uh, and more to do with the presence of assholes. There's a term that I coined uh, not long ago, and I have been sharing it uh, as I can online in the very small circles uh, that I run in online. And um, I think that it's an important term that we all put into our quiver because it, it it is a term that explains a lot of what is going on in our country right now. And uh, the term is Mississippification. Mississippification. Uh, and I'll explain that term in just a moment, but I, I want to preface this by saying that I grew up in Mississippi. And I grew up in the 80s and the 90s when the raw power of hateful conservatism had by and large kind of quelled itself in the South and the South was in some part attempting to reckon with the reputation that it developed. Uh, Mississippi in particular is, you know, the largest slave state, uh, in American history. So the term Mississippification, it goes like this. Mississippification, first, you declare something broken. That's step one. Step two, break it. Step three, anger the masses and blame progressives. Step four, profit. It is almost a laboratory experiment that began in southern states like Mississippi and Alabama and Louisiana and Georgia, where conservatives who had had almost total dominance since Reconstruction or before uh, have taken to finding the systems that are connected to federal programs, things like education, things like farming, and they devise a stratagem to break those things. And that is Mississippification. The first thing they do is they stand up on their pulpit and they say, this is broken. Farmers are suffering. Education is broken. It's broken. And then without any obfuscation in the sunlight, they go forward and they put in legislation that actively breaks those things. They take money from farmers. They take money from schools. They refuse to give teachers raises. They lower the standard of education over and over and over and over again. I watched this happen in the 90s in Mississippi, in public school, where funding was cut more and more and more. And eventually, even though the, the information machine hadn't developed quite to this point, uh, there was always the condemnation of, quote, Democrats. And in Mississippi, if you use the term Democrat, what you're implying is African Americans. So the boogeyman in Mississippi conservative politics has been that the African Americans, the Democrats, are ruining the cities, are ruining education, are doing all of these things, when in reality it's the Republicans who have had total control over these states that are implementing policies, that are breaking these things. And that was so successful in Mississippi and in Alabama in the 90s, in the early 2000s, that it is a practice that has been adopted across red states in America. And we've all watched this happen with Florida with libraries in Florida having their books confiscated and hauled away to dumpsters 
books on racism, books on the on the Civil War, books on World War II, books about Nazis, books that talk about anti-Semitism and how to deal with it, books that talk about the LGBTQ, books that talk about sexuality in general. All of these things, it, it represents a net that is going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There have been entire lawsuits over the First Amendment and our right to read the books that we want to read and write the books that we want to write. And it's established law. I woke up this morning to news in my little town that the Mothers for Liberty, who just recently took over the school board three weeks ago, have decided that they're going to take it a step further. We're not, they're not just going to ban books in the school district. They are actively working to criminalize, criminalize educators and librarians and anyone who would attempt to allow these books to exist in our children's libraries. This is happening in the school district that my children go to school in. And it's unbelievable. The local district attorney has signed onto this plan. Our congressman, Doug Lamborn, has signed onto this plan along with his pastor advisor. The local churches have signed onto this plan. And so <laughs> there's a lot to wrangle with here. There's a lot of things to make you upset, to make me upset, that makes me very upset. And uh, especially when it comes to the intrusion of church into a secular environment like our schools. Churches are explicitly forbidden from being political entities. And it's something that we seem to just ignore and ignore and ignore in America these days, uh, as we do with other conservative political violence and all of the other things that come with that. But we, we're just supposed to ignore the fact that churches are now deeply inside the political realm and they're not being taxed. There's no penalty for being involved in politics if you're a church. You can just continue to not pay taxes. With the true irony being that if you are a Christian and you believe in the word of Jesus Christ, then paying your taxes as a church and having those taxes spent directly on education, on housing the homeless, on feeding the hungry, and on taking care of the sick, Real, actual Christians who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ should be lining up to insist that their churches pay the taxes in order to fix these very real social problems. But that's not what they do, because they're hypocrites. Even the term Moms for Liberty is the most blatantly hypocritical title that has become just ultra common within conservative circles. Call yourself what you're not. Liberty means freedom. And what's interesting is that liberty is also the root word of liberal. But these moms don't want freedom. These moms who aren't even necessarily moms and don't necessarily have children in these school districts are attempting to push their twisted morality on the public of this town. And let me tell you, the public doesn't necessarily agree with them. It was a very tight race. These fascists won by a very, very, very thin margin. Are they going to attempt to solve the teacher pay issue? No, they're not. Uh, the last time they had control, they actually took the Christian charter schools and passed laws that merged those charter schools into the regular school district. And those charter schools have now become a burden on the actual school district. All of that funding for these private charter schools uh, is, is being spread out. We have school choice in this district, which was a conservative position. What it leads to is it leads to segregation in our schools here because you have schools that are predominantly white Christian that reflect Christian conservative values within the school. And we have Title I schools where, where 
there's actually a, um, a, a diversity of students that exist there. And those schools are phenomenal. They have the best educators. They have the smartest and the brightest students. They're actually teaching the things that they need to teach. And it's those schools that are being targeted by these moms for liberty. It's infuriating to me. I hate Nazis. I'm not the kind of guy that gets on the internet and rants away or sits in their car with their phone and rants on a TikTok about these things. I'm not very good at it. I don't want to rant. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to talk about these things. I want to talk about science fiction books. And I want to talk about how awesome science fiction books are. And I want to talk about how fun it is to buy and to sell and to trade books. But we're being governed by people who've not read anything longer than a Facebook post. We're being governed by people who have zero ability to introspect and to consider and to reflect on what their actual philosophy means in terms of suffering. Because that's what these fundamentalist Christian conservative fascists want to do is they want other people to feel as angry and as empty and as intolerant as they feel on a daily basis. We've all heard the, the talking point that, you know, this is our last election. This is our last presidential election. And if conservatives win, we're, we're going to have to eat fascism with our hands. <laughs> and, and, and I don't think it's hyperbole. We've been very clearly on this path for a long time. And I've heard a lot of doubtful rhetoric saying, oh, well, this is hyperbole. You're just, you're just blowing it out of proportion. There are Nazis in my town who want to criminally prosecute people for owning and possessing and providing books. Books. That's fascism, and I've got no patience for it, and this channel has no patience for it. I will continue to be fiercely pro-book, and I will continue to be fiercely anti-fascist. If you have a problem with that, this isn't the channel for you. I apologize. Maybe these positions are bad for my, my wee little book business. So be it. I can't imagine there are very many conservatives buying science fiction books for me anyway. But I'm pissed. This has to stop. We cannot continue to allow people with no shame to propagate hate and bigotry and fascism. It is unacceptable. That's my rant. I'm slightly less upset now. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, I have to say that in the holiday season, if you are feeling blue and you are feeling alone and you are feeling threatened um, by forces that exist, this is a safe place for you and books are a safe place for you. And if you, if you go out there and you find you a book and you sink yourself into it, there is an immeasurable amount of relief that comes from reading books. And it, it's a long term, slow release kind of relief. So do yourself a favor, find something good to read and enjoy it for what it is. And I guess I'll take the advice too. And I'll try not to think too hard on what may come and what tomorrow looks like and all that stuff that scares the hell out of me. And I'll just read and I'll enjoy it and I'll live in the present and you can do the same thing. Be good to each other. Please be kind to each other. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow, a reading rainbow. It's in a book, 
a reading rainbow. 